Hi class, I'm going to review the uh, mobile app process flow diagram um, assignment a bit and show you an example of, uh, of, of something I made regarding this. So in the, in the assignment, I want you to pick two functions from the list you created last week and make a flow diagram for each. Uh, one should have a decision node. Um, which means that the person has to make a decision about what they want to see based on and, and provides input to the system to determine what they see as opposed to just a linear um, selection of choices where the, the, the user makes a decision based on choices you present and there's no input to the system per se. So um, what I did was I pulled up an, uh, an answer to the assignment from last fall, last year, and last year we were working on theme parks, so it won't relate to what we're working on, but I think you'll get the idea. So I'm going through the important features here and content that uh, this person did last year. And one that, that I saw, saw that uh, I thought I would show you has to do with, um, in a theme park, making uh, letting the person see what's available based on the, the, tar the, the height of the participant. Uh, the person's going to use the rides. And, and I was taking my kids when they were younger to theme parks, that was always an issue. Uh, what rides could they get onto and not before I got to the theme park or in terms of what was going to be available and, and interest them. So looking over the, the reading here on, uh, you know, drawing a structured flow chart. And so this is a linear sequence, which doesn't apply to what I'm going to do. Um, but applies a lot of websites in terms of you start and show me this, and then you give another list and you pick from that and so forth, and you go through a series of things to arrive at a conclusion. So you should have one diagram that sort of is a linear progression of, of steps. But another one that's a decision where based on input from the user, something else happens. In this case, saving your tomatoes if there's a frost warning, less than 32 inch degrees, cover them. Greater if it's not less than 30 degrees, don't worry about it. Leave the tomatoes uncovered. So in terms of height at a theme park, and I'll switch over to X Sure now. I may sort of two ways of it, of doing this. Um, neither is right or wrong at this point. The one you ch would choose to use in terms of the interface design is based on what would be ultimately be easier for the person to kind of to figure out and to do. That's intuitive. The first is doing what's based on a um, decision structure and that is a decision by the user. So you start height restrictions on the website somewhere. If the person is greater than 42 inches, yes, we move on to ask another question about whether they're a different height. If they're not greater than 42 inches, in other words, they're shorter than that, less than that, we showed rides for less than 42 inches and there might be a click through to a particular ride to learn about that ride. And then, but if they're greater than 42 inches, we ask another question, are they greater than 48 inches? If no, which means by the logic of it that they're between 42 and 48 inches since we've already eliminated those less than, we would see a ride list for, for, for those who are between 42 and 48 inches and then we can go to a ride. Now, obviously, if they're greater than 48 inches, they can see all rides because we're not saying that someone who's less than 48 inches can't go on these other rides. It just means that they're prohibited from certain rides. Another way to approach it is to do it as a case statement, which is that you present a question and you so offer several answers at once and they choose the one which is most appropriate. So we start at height restrictions. We present one question, what height? Then there's three choices, less than 42 inches, go to my less than 42 inch list, show me a ride. 42 to 48, here's the list for those. Greater than 48 inches, once again, all rides, and see, uh, and then we go to detail the ride. Which I choose would be based on, you know, how the interface works. I'm tending towards uh, a case statement, because I think to have to, go through two steps to see all rides uh, or an extra step just to see rides between 42 and 48 um, seems like too much work. I'd rather just see all three choices and pick the one that's applicable and then go from there. 
So that's my quick demonstration uh, of using how you, Xure can be used for a process flow diagram. Uh, remember what you're doing is picking two functions from the list you created last week and one of them should have a decision node just like I showed you. They both can have a decision node but <clears throat> at least one should. The other can be a linear sequence and submit them to me and I'll, um, I'll prove one of the diagrams to be used for your prototype or let you choose which one you want to use or make suggestions. So thanks a lot and uh, good luck.